everybody, Joe Joseph here for TheDailySheeple.com, and this is your new shot. So, it looks like yet another mountain is a-trembling in the United States. That's right, according to the Seattle Times, we have earthquake swarms at Mount Rainier. And I got news for you. They say it isn't unusual. I'm going to get into that in a second. But first, I'd like to invite you to put your tinfoil hat on for a second. And join me on a journey, if you will, through some of the events that have happened here in the recent weeks. It says here that more than 20 small quakes have struck under the volcano in the past week, a rate that's higher than usual, but not unprecedented. Nearly two dozen, to be exact, have uh, rattled Mount Rainier over the past week, but seismologists said, of course, there's no cause for worry. Hey! They say in the past, these swarms last of a, you know, a couple of days, maybe a week, and then they die out. This according to Paul Bowden of the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network at the University of Washington. The first of 23 quakes struck on September 11th <clears throat> near the volcano summit. September 11th. The largest of the quakes registered magnitude 1.6. Tinfoil hattery. Now, the earthquake swarms are common at volcanoes, duh, and usually don't signify any threat of eruption. So this is what Bowden said. So I'm treating this as a single eyebrow raised halfway. That's the scientific terminology, if you will. Let's give it half a Spock. Yeah. He said, yeah, I see you will be watching, but I don't think you're going to attack. Speaking to the volcano. Most volcanic Quake swarms originate in the hydrothermal plumbing system related to slight changes in temperature or groundwater pressure that causes cracking of rocks and the recent quakes are shallow, which also suggests that they are not connected to the deep movement of magna, maybe harp. Rainier experienced similar upticks in the past two years and more sustained episodes of seismicity in 2009. Okay, so now we got Mount Rainier shaken. Hmm. And they say that it's been shaken now, you know, off and on since 2009. We also got Yellowstone that has really seen a large uptick in activity. We've got the New Madrid Fault. And then we had the Great American Eclipse. Now, the interesting thing about the Great American Eclipse, and this is where I really need you guys to put those tinfoil hats on, especially with the spinner on top. That would be really good. The Great American Eclipse, when it traversed the United States, started where? It started very close to the Oregon-Washington border. It then traversed over Yellowstone, across the New Madrid Fault, and then out to sea. Uh, if you notice, there's a lot of activity now at Mount Rainier, up in Washington State. You've got a lot of activity at Yellowstone. And out in the Atlantic, we have uh, Hurricane Palooza going on, which if you take a look at Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico was destroyed by Hurricane Maria. I have to say that one more time. Puerto Rico was destroyed by Hurricane Maria. And, of course, we had Irma, and we had Harvey, and we had Jose. All of these things that are happening, to me, signify signs. Because just as we experience life in the physical, there are forces at work in the spiritual that also affect our lives and our environment. And we're in a time right now where we were given what I believe is a sign that our days as a world-dominating empire are numbered. And that America, coming soon, I don't know how soon, certainly not September 23rd, I hate that crap, by the way, uh, that is not, that is beyond tinfoil hattery. That 
September 23rd stuff takes it, oh, about 20 steps over tinfoil hattery. So I don't advocate the September 23rd garbage because the guy that's advocating it is stretching and is going to have, he's going to have his own problems and things to answer for when September 24th comes around and everybody's still here just like everything else, you know? Now, he is classified as, and I can't remember his name, but a Christian numerologist. But interestingly enough, um, there's nothing really biblical in cherry-picking a few verses here and there just to make a point to get clicks, to get subscribers on these YouTube channels where, uh, by the way, that's the only place that you can see Nibiru. How come you can't see Nibiru from space? You got to see him on YouTube, right? Nibiru doesn't exist except on YouTube. It's unbelievable. Now, do I say that Nibiru doesn't exist? No. But what I'm saying is, it's certainly not where they say it is, nor do I believe is it affecting our planet the way that they say it is. And if it was as close as they say it was, then I would imagine there would be, oh, thousands upon thousands of armchair astronomers that have been tracking or would have tracked this planet, this big brown dwarf coming in for a decade or more. But that, of course, isn't happening. What I do believe is going on is that our solar system is subjected to cyclical events. And these cyclical events cause things like solar maximums, solar minimums, and also grand minimums. We traverse the galactic plane of our galaxy. When we do that, it has forces that the center of the galaxy exert on our planet, creating Earth changes, solar system changes, galaxy changes, you name it, there's changes. It's certainly not 923, you know? It's funny, the Bible says a couple things. Don't hasten the day. A lot of people do that. And the other thing is, oh, that, you know, silly, that silly verse, I come as a thief in the night, you know, not what day or what time. I don't know. Seems to me the best course of action, in my humble opinion, is to be the best person you can be every day. And don't assign dates to anything because it makes you look like a dumbass in the grand scheme of things. But something to pay attention to is all of these earthquakes that you see down in Mexico, straight up on the uh, San Andreas Fault and other fault lines on the West Coast. Now you got Mount Rainier with a volcanic swarm, quake swarm. You've got Yellowstone, quake swarms. I'm telling you folks, I have a feeling that with all of the shaking and all of these big storms, this isn't the last we're going to see of our natural disasters. And that as weather gets crazier, as time goes on, as our sun changes its behavior, we need to brace ourselves for some possible big weather and seismic and volcanic events to come. I'm Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeple.com's News Shot. Feel free to comment below and visit our website at thedailysheeple.com, especially on September 24th. Have a great day.